Okay, thanks, Jennifer. Uh, as you can see, my background is in uh, engineering, project management. I was a VP of engineering in uh, Lockheed Martin. And then uh, for the last, uh, gosh, 10 years plus, I've been working with Learning Tree developing courses and uh, instructing in courses. So let's get right into the presentation. We want to talk about project management uh, in the uh, post-COVID world. So we need to look at pre-COVID as well as post-COVID. And we're talking about thriving. So what do we mean by thriving, a social group to thrive? Uh, there's a definition, uh, you know, prosper, progress. Uh, but if you look at it in three important dimensions is that we have positive emotions, positive relationships, and we have positive meaning. And I think it's foregone conclusion that the COVID has affected all of those. Uh, you know, our emotions, uh, you know, last year were fear of uh, the transmission of the disease. Our relationships were impacted uh, because of lockdowns and working from home. And uh, positive meaning was uh, impacted if we were economically uh, affected by the by the uh, pandemic. Now, this social group could be uh, a family, a business, a union, all the way up to a society, or this social group could be your project team. So if you want to be a project leader, getting your team to thrive again is in your job jar. And that's what <laughs> one of the things you need to be successful at to have your team uh, successfully uh, prosper in the post-COVID world. Now, what do we mean by post-COVID world? We don't mean that COVID is gone and there's no more, uh, you know, uh, danger of uh, catching the uh, coronavirus. But we re we mean that uh, normal activities are going to resume, and we will understand the viral transmission of uh, COVID the way we understand uh, smallpox and measles and the flu. And the, the general public will, by and large, trust the scientific community in terms of what the dangers are and what the transmission rates are, for example. And the health risks uh, that come from COVID will be accepted, uh, like other risks we have to uh, endure in our daily life. So post-COVID world doesn't mean there is no COVID. It means we're getting back to our normal activities. Now, our normal activities are project management. I like to think of project management in uh, three key areas. One is traditional project management, where the project manager and his or her team know the future, right? And they're being paid for their knowledge. They use a waterfall approach because they can predict the future, and they use monitoring and control to make sure they're on track. A jet engine uh, design might fit that example, or might be an example. Agile project management, uh, we're paying that team to learn about the future and adapt to the future. And that's incremental deliveries based on user input. An example would be uh, K through 12 education with some students in the brick and mortar school, some students uh, at home. Uh, that project team would have to learn about what the issues are, is it bandwidth, how many people have Chromebooks, do you have someone in your family that can get online? It's about learning and innovation. And one of the key innovations that's important right now is uh, messenger RNA. It's been worked on for the last two decades, and it's now a key element of uh, several of our vaccines. So that's uh, three buckets of, uh, of project management. And before COVID hit, before uh, March of 2020, we were doing those. COVID hit, we went from being in control to some loss of control. We had disruptions. We had some opportunities and, and we had challenges. So let's uh, look at those in a, just a little more detail. Uh, we wanna get into the future, but let's just take a little quick look at, at the past to make sure we understand the lessons that were there for us to, uh, to acquire. So we had challenges from a scientific point of view to understanding viral transmission in the first place. Was it uh, ballistic droplets? Was it aerosols in the air? Was it surfaces that had the virus on it? Uh, current consensus is that uh, the aerosol transmission is a major factor in uh, the transmission. Uh, there's a uh, report there you can click on and uh, from MIT that uh, kind of outlines some of these different uh, drivers of uh, transmission. Uh, touch surfaces is no longer thought to be a major transmission. 
efficacy of masks. I think there's no debate if you're indoors and you're talking to someone that has potentially uh, has the coronavirus, masks make sense. Outdoors and in other situations, unfortunately, they become a political football. Uh, the importance of ventilation. Project uh, managers should be all over this. Air changes per hour, filtration, humidity control. Those are things that we needed to understand to make sure our workplaces and the workplaces your project teams operate in are as safe as they can be. Other challenges were uh, the uh, availability of PPE. Uh, many issues that were addressed by uh, project managers and getting that resolved. Uh, there's a global supply chain, and I think people are rethinking the whole just-in-time supply chain uh, based on some of the COVID challenges when it came to PPE and ventilator manufacturing. We'll come back to that a little bit later. GM's automotive parts uh, assembly line was uh, trans uh, changed into a ventilator production line with 10,000 ventilators produced per month. And that generates a new way of thinking when uh, you address some of the COVID challenges that uh, have been addressed. Working from home was another challenge. There's been debates about working from home you know, for the last two decades, and all of a sudden it turned on a dime. Uh, and there had to be a balance between the empowerment of the team and co-location. Uh, psychological impacts had to be considered, the collaboration tools. So this COVID challenge was right in the sweet spot of what uh, project teams are all about and how to manage a project team. And I think it's a COVID challenge that uh, has by and large been successfully addressed. Vaccination uh, is another challenge. Basic research, as I mentioned earlier, uh, mRNA, uh, pre-ordering of vaccines, and then the vaccination logistics uh, of just getting the shots in the arms of people. That's a project management activity in my local community. <laughs> I'm the project team at our uh, county health group did wonders. It was very simple. I got my first vaccine in uh, January. They knew what they were doing. It was uh, Project Management 101. Unfortunately, it's not uh, universal, the success, but uh, I think in general, the, the vaccination is on its way in large part due to the efforts of uh, project managers. Disappointments, education, uh, especially for certain uh, grades, the people that were seniors, or the people that were going into freshman year, or even the people that were going into kindergarten, uh, there are special disappointments there, social contacts with our families, and unfortunately, unemployment if uh, people were impacted by that due to the downturn in the uh, economy driven by the pandemic. And we had some, not disappointments, but disasters in the terms of mortality, now up to over 600,000 people. Years of life lost, COVID is uh, comparable to cancer and, and five times that due to auto uh, fatalities. There's really no silver lining here except the thought that life is short. And I think people now have, have made that part of their uh, decisions going forward and, and how to uh, conduct their, their lives. They are aware that uh, the unfortunate can happen. Now, there are opportunities uh, that were manifest during the uh, pandemic. Uh, is just some uh, economic winners and losers. So uh, information processing equipment, working on your home, furnishings for home, that increased. Uh, gasoline and energy decreased. Uh, certainly there were opportunities. And if you look at some of the stock prices, <laughs> you can prove it in uh, the stock price of Zoom or Amazon or Lowe's. Uh, so if you were smart enough to invest in those companies, that, that was certainly an opportunity that, that happened during uh, COVID. But uh, more important, I think that COVID inspired new ways of thinking. And so let's slow down a little bit and start talking about the, the future as opposed to wringing our hands about the past. We had these disappointments, but we had opportunities and challenges as we mitigated COVID. And those generated new ways of thinking. Uh, one of the main news ways of thinking is that this idea of complex adaptive systems are real and the butterfly effect is real. 
Now, the butterfly effect, effect is taught in project management courses, sometimes uh, tongue in cheek with the idea that uh, from chaos theory, that a butterfly flapping its wings in Tokyo could affect the weather in Manhattan. And you would teach that, as I said, you'd say, well, the damping of the atmosphere will probably make that uh, not a reality. But guess what? A bat flapping its wings over a wet market in Wuhan affected more than the weather in Manhattan. So this idea of complex adaptive systems is real. The butterfly effect is real. We can't predict the future. We have to adapt to it. And that new way of thinking is going to have an impact on how we address many things. For example, climate change, uh, renewable energy, uh, education. Now, the Institute for the Future, they've looked at the uh, effect of the pandemic and they say that the things that will uh, occur because of it can be put into four buckets, uh, things that will grow, things that will be constrained, things that will collapse and things that will be transformative. So let's look at those four areas in uh, relation to project management. So, for example, uh, growth, what's going to grow? Well, obviously, optimizing remote collaboration. Uh, whoops, what happened there? Uh, optimizing remote uh, collaboration is going to grow. Uh, it's upon us right now, ensuring employee health. The pandemic affected companies right at the bottom line. So that's a field that's going to grow. Online retail and wholesale, that's already during 2020 equaled the uh, brick and mortar uh, retail and wholesale. Those are areas that are, grow are going to grow and affect project management. Areas that will be constrained, reduced travel. Uh, customer interaction is going to be affected by this uh, reduced travel. Even care for the elderly is going to be a uh, needs a new mindset is going to be constrained. Things are going to collapse. Trust in a predictable future. So someone graduating from college in 2020 is not going to trust the predictable future and the corporate ladder the way maybe many of us did when we graduated. Uh, and you need to be aware of that uh, as a leader in your organization. Single loop learning is going to collapse. Single loop learning means you have a model for how the world works and you make your decisions based on that model and the model doesn't change come hell or high water. Uh, double loop learning, which we could put over in the growth area, you allow your model to change with new data. Another thing that will collapse is entering another's uh, personal space. I mean, uh, the idea of hugging and shaking hands with strangers is probably not going to be as uh, part of the business environment uh, the way it has been in the, in the past. And what might be transformative? Education, especially people uh, learning from home after paying $50,000 for uh, tuition is going to make people rethink what uh, higher education is all about. Energy and what might change in the world of project management in this uh, post-COVID world. So let's look at some specific opportunities. And these opportunities are for the C-suite. They're for those with influence. They're for project managers and then also for individuals. So we were lack of control uh, in, during COVID, post-COVID. Hopefully, we're back in control and we can uh, engage in these uh, opportunities uh, and address these challenges. So let's look at some of the specific opportunities. And we're, we're showing these uh, first uh, in a commercial sense. So you have your organization and you have your competition and you want to increase your market share. Uh, it could also be in a large organization, your project team versus other project teams. And you want your project team to be the, the uh, project team that the organization looks to as being uh, a team that has its act together. So how are you going to increase that market share? Well, one way is going to be in balancing work from home with on-site collaboration. The teams that can do that better are going to be the teams that uh, are viewed as being more successful in the organization. And they are the teams are going to win market share from their competitors because employees are going to want to work for organizations that know how to get this balance right. 
you're going to be saving money because of the reduced square footage, but you have to also think about knowledge transfer, decision making, innovation, motivation, what kind of tools you're going to select for collaboration. Now you can now access a global workforce. Uh, so uh, that's an advantage and, and which teams can make better use of that, again, are going to increase their market share. How you can bring uh, remote participants into the hybrid meetings, um, the better you can do that, the better word will get that you are the kind of team or the kind of company that knows how to make this balance happen. Work from home with on-site collaboration. Another thing that will affect your market share is uh, how you address travel costs. Uh, as travel goes down, customer interaction goes down and competitive knowledge is gleaned from face to face meeting with, meetings with customers. Uh, they may have a preference for <laughs> staying more safe and not requiring uh, face to face. So what are you going to do about it? Aggressive use of data science is one way to make sure you understand your uh, customer profile in when you're you know been reduced in that ability because of face-to-face uh, -face and travel more use of simulation and also when it comes to travel recall that employees i think general like travel there's a lot of bonding that happens on uh, travel your team gets more motivated when they travel together and work on issues together out of the office what are you going to replace and your team uh, as travel uh, decreases to offset that uh, lack of that uh, lack of uh, motivation. Another thing you need to address is onboarding new employees uh, in this hybrid work from home environment and the companies and teams that can do that better are going to be more successful and increase their market share. So the hiring process in a socially distant world, how you do that. Uh, the 10, 20, 70 rule, basically 70% of employee knowledge comes from mentors and the assignments they have. In this uh, work from home world, how are you going to ensure that that is happening? Training, retention, YOLO, you only live once employees, like that employee that graduated uh, in 2020 I mentioned, they may have a little different idea about the corporate ladder and be more willing to move to another company because they have this you only live once idea they know that the future is unpredictable if you can't onboard them in a proper way well guess what uh, they're going to be going to the companies that can importance of mentoring uh, and there's been i think some loss of trust in the corporate career ladder that you need to replace in your local level as a project uh, leader and of course, we want to keep our employees healthy and safe. Uh, how are you going to do that in the post COVID world? Are people going to be asked to wear masks? Is everyone going to have to be vaccinated? Uh, are we going to do contact tracing? Uh, the six foot rule is a little bit more uh, complex. There's another link there to a model from MIT that allows you to uh, determine what the probability of transmission is back at, at your office once we start co-locating once again. Understanding a shifting marketplace. Uh, the companies that can do that better are gonna win market share. New products and new services uh, in adjacent markets. So uh, Uber used to drive people around, now it drives food around and, and delivers food to uh, people. An adjacent market, they were smart enough to get on top of that. What are the products that you're going to be uh, smart enough to get on top of as this, uh, we return to this uh, or enter this post-COVID world. Maybe there may be more reason for design simulation, willingness to take on risk, and in a new product shifting marketplace, imagination versus knowledge. Imagination can be as important or more important than knowledge. Uh, there's a lot of money being spent in this post-COVID world, $2 trillion. And much of it is spent in the wheelhouse of project management. Aid to states and, and local governments, that's where often project managers uh, exercise their career. Education and childcare, building new uh, schools, uh, uh, small businesses, testing uh, and vaccines. That should be, all, project managers should be all over that and uh, rural hospital assistance. A lot of money being aimed at hospitals, 
and the maintenance departments of hospitals are run by project managers and uh, there's more funding there smart project managers will be aware of how to acquire that funding and apply it in an efficient uh, cost-effective manner now we've been talking about commercial organizations uh, and market share uh, many project managers work for non in the nonprofit world and the government world. So rather than, uh, you know, market share, you're worried about your legacy, your organization and the people you serve. So on the right hand side, you still have to do all that good stuff of balancing work from home with uh, on site collaboration. But in your organization, if you're in a school board somewhere, you need to worry about returning students to the classroom. If you're working in the VA, you need to worry about delivering hands on health care. Uh, if you're working for the FDA, addressing uh, public health. So it's not only dollars and cents, it's your legacy in a nonprofit uh, organization. So those are some specific uh, opportunities. What are your individual challenges and opportunities? Well, let's look at those that have been negatively impacted by COVID you need to demonstrate resilience it's easier said than done i don't have any silver bullets but uh obviously if you've been impacted you need to figure a way to get back on top of your career on on uh, top of uh your in your relationships with your family and your co-workers uh if you haven't been impacted and frankly most of us haven't most of us haven't caught covid most of us haven't lost our job we still need to show empathy for those that have been impacted. And uh, that's going to uh, relate to our personal legacy going forward. And then the other challenge is leadership. If you want to engage within your professional sphere of influence to see your organization thrive again. And I think every project leader should want to see their project team thrive once again. Leadership is, not, is a decision, okay? It's not an assignment. So no one's going to assign you to do that. You, you need to really uh, whip, uh, take that on yourself, your mantle that you are going to be decide to be a leader or decide to follow someone in your organization that is demonstrating leadership and returning the organization to a thriving state. One way to look at leadership, this uh, picture here, you know, on the, the left hand side is where you are right now. Current system in this case, in the presence of COVID, the leader understands the data that's driving that. On the right-hand side is a thriving social system post-COVID. The leader can articulate what that's going to look like, whether it's the working from home or whether it's new products or whether it's going to be how we keep our employees safe. The leader has a way to get there, a change model, and owns that change model. And the leader realizes that it's not just logic that's going to allow the followers to follow you to this uh, improved state. It's also emotion that's going to be part of it. Now in that change model, uh, an important kind of element or way to think about it might be this uh, idea of VUCA. You've probably heard that phrase, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. If those things are high, you need a different approach to that change model than when there are and they are low. So if you were asked to be the person that orchestrates uh, booster shots for everybody in your organization come next November, uh, that's low VUCA. There's no ambiguity about it or complexity. You want to get shots in people's arms. You would use a traditional project management approach, work breakdown structure, command and control. However, if you're asked to come up with the protocols for uh, all the employees to operate in a healthy, safe environment in a brick and mortar situation. And you need to understand uh, whether we're going to require masks, whether we're going to put a plexiglass uh, down the center of the conference table in the conference room. Uh, there'll be people that will disagree with those approaches. Uh, there'll be ambiguity, there'll be complexity. And you, as the person assigned for that task, is going to have to have a different approach uh, than traditional project management put together, uh, you know, WBS. It's going to be more an agile mindset uh, with incremental changes, listening to the users uh, to get to the end state. So 
we're encouraging you folks to be leaders uh, in, in terms of, of bringing your organization back to a thriving state. Uh, you, the leader, hold yourself responsible for returning those within your sphere of influence uh, to a state in which they can thrive again, or you follow someone that has that uh, drumbeat. And uh, you should look for leadership opportunities within your sphere of, sphere of influence in areas of what will grow, what will be constrained, what will collapse, and what can be transformed. Now, in subsequent uh, SME casts, we'd like to get some specific challenges that you have and apply this project leadership model uh, to see how uh, you can use it to uh, improve and, and how you project yourself as a leader and how you can be more successful, again, in getting your team back to that thriving state. With that, I'm going to turn it back to uh, Jennifer. She's going to explain a little bit more about how this uh, community is going to work. And I think she'll also uh, take questions and uh, we'll see if we can answer them. Jennifer. OK, thank you, John. Thanks so much. Um, yep, for our attendees, now is the time to drop any questions you have for John in the chat pod there. Uh, and we'll get to those questions in just a second. Um, and as as John mentioned here, um, our next event, uh, which will be July 28th, will be a workshop style event. We like to call a skill cast. That's going to be a direct follow on of today's event. And to ensure that we get the maximum benefit out of that event, we are asking for your input. So you will see us dropping a link uh, in the chat pod here shortly. Uh, there we go. Thank you, Amanda. Um, all you have to do is follow that link and submit, we ask that you submit a project or a challenge that you're experiencing or one that you can see on the horizon post COVID. Then Dr. John here is going to select a few of your submissions to highlight on our upcoming skill cast. Uh, don't worry, we won't use your name or your company's name in the event. It'll all be anonymous, though we will let you know ahead of time, uh, just privately, uh, that we're using your submission so you know not to miss that event. Um, and once again, I do encourage all of you to log into your My Learning Tree account today and register for that next event. Uh, join the conversations that are happening over in that LinkedIn group. We've got subject matter experts just standing by waiting to help you. So please take advantage of these great benefits that you have right now. Okay, and finally, uh, uh, Dr. John, let's get into some questions here. Um, one of the first questions that, that we have here is, um, as a project manager, what makes post-COVID different uh, to when COVID was not around? Project management is, uh, is generally the same. Is this difference at the, the business decision-making level, or, or, or what do you think? What are your thoughts on that? I think it's on the team level, you know, so there's business decisions that have to get made, but a project manager has to uh, lead a team and, and projects are uh, successful in uh, their delivering of unique products and services because of the team effort. And I think the uh, co-location and uh, combined with the work from home uh, nature of the team is going to be a major challenge for uh, project managers. And I think the successful project managers uh, in uh, 2021 and 2022 that become leaders in 2023 are the ones that demonstrated that they knew to ha they found a way to make their teams thrive again. Uh, so I think it's m the main challenge is the teamwork. Now, there are other decision challenges that will be made um, maybe in the C-suite or other areas where new products can be brought to bear. And uh, that's more in the decision making, uh, still impacted by the nature of hybrid work. But uh, in summary, I would say managing your team and making it dynamic and successful is the biggest challenge. OK, great. The next question we have um, is, in our company, we have been just as busy, if not more busy, during COVID. What impact do you think we will see post-COVID? Uh, well, I would say hey, a lot of people are busy. Do we know who are the real contributors in that? Is it just, in, in other words, uh, when everyone is co-located, uh, we know who the contributors are and we can uh, do the right career uh, adjustments to reward those people and to help other people that are 
uh, may, might be struggling. Uh, so now everybody's busy. We're in a post-COVID world. Do we still have that same connection to who are the successful employees? Who are the employees that need additional help? Uh, are we just going to <laughs> Zoom meetings for the sake of it? Or are we actually uh, being productive in those Zoom meetings? You know, emails flying like crazy, I'm sure. But are we making concise decisions uh, deliberately and, and quickly? So I think that would be the the challenge. More work doesn't mean more efficiency. Uh, good project management means more efficiency. Okay, great. Um, all right, uh, we have a couple more questions here, and I see some some folks uh, typing. Um, the next one is uh, from an existing um, PMP. Um, certification holder. What are the new skills uh, that you think they should have in order to meet the demands of the post-COVID environment? I'd say one of, primarily one of them is emotional intelligence and it comes in uh, often under the word of soft skills which I think is the worst name for those skills. Whoever invented the name soft skills should be <laughs> go down in history as uh, not a great contributor. Those skills are hard. They're hard to master and they're extremely important. So they're anything but soft. So when we have people that have been uh, that now on your team that might have been uh, affected by uh, COVID or you have uh, family members uh, working from home and worrying about daycare, the empathy that you demonstrate uh, as a leader is, is key. So I would say uh, PMP certification is great. Uh, having empathy uh, is even greater. So I would say emotional intelligence, empathy are key skills that are going to be required in this post-COVID world. Okay, great. Okay, and now uh, we do have a, a, a comment here um, uh, and, and a couple of questions. First, they thank you for such an informative presentation. Um, and the first question is, what industries do you feel will thrive in this post-COVID world? Online, I would say. I mean, already that's almost an obvious uh, issue. Uh, I would say in the uh, you know, we mentioned uh, not entering someone's personal space. So it's a contactless uh, uh, financial exchange is going to be huge and, and has been uh, important. Uh, but, you know, the electronic wallet, uh, that, that's going to be more uh, more common. Uh, I would say uh, using data science is also going to be another uh, industry that uh, can be brought to bear. We have less contact with customers potentially in the post-COVID world. Uh, we need uh, data science uh, to understand as best we can the dynamics of our uh, customer base. So I think that would be an area uh, that would be a, a growing area. Uh, collaboration tools uh, where you can have people working from home, people in the office, but in a meeting, you almost can't tell the difference. You know, everyone is kind of at the same level as opposed to the person working from home, their voice coming through a, a loudspeaker in the corner of the room. So industries where we can build a, a more a robust collaborative environment are going to be uh, growth areas in the future. Okay, thank you. All right, and question number two here from this individual. For PMs looking for newer opportunities, any feedback on how they can thrive in a new company environment, um, a hybrid environment, or a work from home environment? I'd, I'd be a squeaky wheel. <laughs> you know, I, I just said uh, people uh, grow in the organization because of the mentors they have and the assignments that they've been given. You know, that uh, 10, 20, 70, 10 percent is your education, 20 percent of your mentors, 70 percent is just the assignments you receive. So uh, I would be a squeaky wheel. I don't know what the uh, communication mechanism is in the uh, organization you are a part of, but uh, let <laughs> your folks, your peers and the purple people you work for, you know, let them know your interest in uh, developing your career. In, in getting challenging assignments uh, and being a, a contributor. It's easy to do it when everyone's co-located. You just know who the hustlers are. It's going to be harder to uh, do that 
you know, work from home, you got to figure out the right politically correct way to, to push for your career growth, uh, even though you're in a work from home environment. I wish I had a silver bullet for that one. I think that's going to be one of the major challenges, both for the employees and for the organization to make sure that, uh, that, that, that career growth gets optimized in that hybrid work environment. Very good. Okay, and the next question, there have been articles about millennials now looking for work from home remote jobs post COVID and resigning from roles that require them in the offices since they have realized that uh, they can function well, good work life balance in that work from home uh, remote job environment. Any feedback on that? I think the organizations need to uh, reflect that and address that. Uh, the economy right now, I mean, the, the people that are willing to leave their current job and look for a new one is at the, at the highest level, the way they measure some of these metrics. I don't know exactly but uh, how the measurement happens, but people are more willing to uh, move to a new company uh, than they have been. And the economy is allowing that with the uh, investment in the economic uh, level. So I think uh, millennials <laughs> need to be aware a little bit that they are perhaps in the driver's seat and uh, demand that their uh, companies allow them to have this freedom and in working from home. Uh, and if they don't, they can vote with their uh, shoe leather to, to go to the companies that do uh, recognize that post COVID we realized that uh, there are other things that we need to worry about besides the bottom line namely our health and our families uh, while we manage our careers. So I think shoe leather might be the main answer there. All right, very good. Okay, um, so the next question, I like this question a lot. Any tips on how to push for more engagement in co-located teams, maybe rotating meeting presenters so they have uh, to actively prepare versus multitasking and not listening? Uh, that and maybe some ground rules uh, on uh, whether everybody has to be on audio or not. It's, it's some of the courses I teach, I ask, well, now you're all working from home and when you have meetings, uh, do you have to have your camera on? So even something as simple as that, where you would say, hey, everybody put the cameras on so we can see what our uh, body language is to the best extent we can. And, uh, you know, Maybe simple things like that could, could allow everyone to have a, a fair uh, playing field when they're trying to uh, express their ability to uh, offer good ideas and new ideas. Uh, again, no silver bullets, but uh, hard work on the, on, the, on the project leaders part to make sure they're extracting that kind of participation from everybody. Any, any willingness of those people to be squeaky wheels and, and figure out the right way to, to get that uh, visibility. You know, visibility, it would be a gigantic word, right, in uh, corporate America. You know, you got to have the visibility, how you make presentations, you know, I've come across that in my entire career. What's the equivalent of visibility going to be uh, in a virtual world? I wish I knew. <laughs> But uh, you need to use your imagination to see how you can become visible uh, in the organization you're supporting. Okay, very good. And I see some more uh, folks uh, typing in here. So if you do have a question, be sure to get it in here in the next couple of minutes if you're able. Um, our next question is, uh, and, and this is, um, uh, let's see here, we have, what is the best way to prepare for a PMP certification? Uh, well, the best way to prepare is to uh, get some training <laughs> on uh, the mechanics of, of uh, passing that test and, and the basic knowledge you need to, to pass that test and how to acquire it. Uh, Learning Tree has classes on uh, PMP uh, preparation. Uh, I would say those are extremely useful. And then just the online uh, learning tests you can uh, purchase very economically of sample questions and, and practice uh, practice those tests so you're ready for that two hour uh, event. Uh, preparation will be the key in, in succeeding in that PMP certification. 
great. Yeah. And I will say that uh, Learning Trees uh, PMP exam prep course does come with hundreds of uh, uh, practice questions. Um, so you would probably find that helpful. Um, and also, I, I would encourage you to log into the uh, into our LinkedIn group um, and, and rely on our community there. And if you have questions um, about that, we have a lot of subject matter experts who can who can help you out with that for sure. Okay, our next question is uh, pre-agile was all about co-locating teams to eliminate commu communication barriers uh, and to foster creation. Work from home uh, and work from there is the way is in no way close to providing the co-location environment. Any ideas on how to promote a remote uh, collaboration? Well, I think, uh, you know, one way that it would be if some collaboration <laughs> tool company comes up with a whiteboard or the equivalent of it, you know, one of the great things in the Agile world, you know, five years ago they were pushing, what we need is software developers standing in front of a whiteboard face-to-face -face communication immediately, uh, drawing ideas and data flows or whatever. Uh, I would think you need some kind of, keep, keep that in your mind as, as your gold standard of, of when you're collaborating with your people, do you have something that, that is as close to that as, as possible? Immediate transfer of ideas, immediate discussion of those ideas, you know, in the kind of the brainstorming sense. There are a lot of uh, collaboration tools out there. You got to be a savvy uh, buyer uh, in, in acquiring the ones that are going to help your team. But I would keep that picture of a whiteboard and uh, four software developers arguing about something as the model of uh, the nirvana of what you want to achieve in a virtual world. Okay, very good. And I do see uh, one more person here typing, so we'll we'll hold and see if uh, if they can get their question in here. Um, as we're talking about uh, all of these new skills and um, skills to expand upon uh, for project managers, are there any learning tree courses that uh, that you would suggest um, for for fostering these new skills? Well, this idea of uh, leadership in a, during a crisis, we have a course on that. We have a course on leadership for uh, traditional and agile projects, and we have a course on agile uh, adapt, uh, agile leadership. So I think in, in the, the agile drumbeat is going to increase uh, post-COVID, right, because traditional models, we predict the future. COVID has told us we can't predict the future. So we have to react to the future, and that's uh, what agility is all about. That's what uh, agile uh, teams are all about, and that's what agile leadership is all about. So we have a course, agile leadership, aimed directly at, at trying to have the participants uh, lead with a framework of, of how to think about uh, managing the future and reacting to the future. Emotional intelligence is another area we have many uh, courses in uh, emotional intelligence as well. Data science, as I said, data science is going to be more required because of restricted interface and travel to users. Uh, one way to replace that is a more robust uh, attention to what uh, data science can provide. Okay, great. Well, um, I don't see any other questions, so I think we'll uh, we'll leave it there. I do want to thank everybody for uh, for dropping their questions in here so that we could address them. Really great conversation, um, and also uh, Dr. John Hogan, thank you so much for this uh, awesome presentation today, and thanks to everyone who who uh, joined today's event. Um, like I said earlier in the hour, the recording of this event will be available in your My Learning Tree account pretty soon. Um, and of course, that we uh, we look forward to seeing you all in the LinkedIn community group and in our next event in July. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day. Okay, thank you.